Hi Virgo Sun and Rising, welcome to your December 2022 astral update. It's Raina here. Well, this is very interesting because there's a lot of uh, Capricorn energy coming in and Capricorn is a fellow Earth sign. So it's always nice when uh, we have transits of signs that are of uh, our same element. So in your, your case, the Earth. Uh, because then it forms a trine and everything manifests easier. So the other thing that is going on as well is that you have um, your opposite sign, uh, Pisces, being represented by two transits. First of all, Jupiter has gone direct as of... November 23rd and is transiting through Pisces um, through the first few weeks of the month. So this is going to affect your seventh house of committed partnership. So not only is Jupiter direct, but it's in this house of um, committed partnership. It can also be like legal affairs, but it can be very fortunate because Jupiter is a very fortunate planet. And on the third of the month, Neptune goes direct in its own sign of Pisces at 22 degrees of Pisces. So you've also had Neptune transiting this seventh house. And actually, this has been years for you that you've had this. And this can have different effects. Of course, um, there might be more of the nebulous uh, influence of... of um, Neptune, where you get involved with somebody, you're committed to someone, and you don't know really who you're dealing with. And you find out, oh, that person's already married, or um, I didn't know that they had kids. I thought that, you know, this person was child, you know, was without children, whatever, things like that, deceptive qualities. But there can be the soulmate qualities, the ideal partner or a spiritual partner, a partner where you bolster each other spiritually, you help each other become higher versions of yourself. So uh, with Jupiter, I think that the good stuff might be more prevalent, but that's um, at the beginning of the month. Now, I will say that while Neptune was retrograde uh, for the last few months, you may have felt disillusioned by um, some kind of partnership. It doesn't have to necessarily be romantic. Maybe you had a business partnership that didn't work out. But now that Neptune is direct, you can have the good parts of this influence, which is more of the idealism. Idealism taken to the extreme is gullibility, right? So it's not about doing that. It's about... Um, being able to have faith, being able, you know, being able to trust and to believe that there is uh, something that is right for you, or in this case, a person that is right for you. On the sixth, Mercury goes into Capricorn. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Um, Capricorn for you is the fifth house, which is a really fun place for, um, you to have transit. So you're the sign of Virgo sun and rising that in the, the month of December, when it is holiday season, where you're actually experiencing a lot of what that would represent because the fifth house is a house of fun. And so Mercury and it's, you know, love creativity and things like that. So Mercury here can just mean, uh, in terms of artistic pursuits, the theater, um, maybe even concerts, going to something where you are um, able to to experience words, not from the analytical sense that you, because this is your ruler, Mercury, and you're all about the um, practical types of information, this would be more of the artistic expression uh, with using words. So I always think of the theater or poetry readings. 
Um, if you are a writer, this can be a great time for you to be writing. And you might be talking to somebody that you're crushing on. On the 7th, there is a full moon at 16 degrees of Gemini. Gemini is a fellow mutable sign. This is coming from your 10th house. So this could be some kind of recognition, a promotion, some kind of honor bestowed upon you or other um, recognition of the, jo the great job that you're doing. Mars is retrograding in this 10th house. So it is possible that some of you are going to let go of a profession. And it could be maybe you are remaking your image. You know, the 10th house can be your reputation in the world, your status. And Mars retrograde can see you kind of having a do-over of some sort. And I kind of take these things lightly because I personally don't believe that, you know, other people's impression of you, you know, professionally or whatever, that that's important or anything like that. But in terms of mundane events, it could have some bearing on, you know, things that actually happen because, um, this is an area where, because it's connected to your career and it's cor connected to people in positions of authority, that could be a theme because when Mars is in the 10th house direct, there can be clashes with authority figures. So if you've declared a truce, if you've, you know, realized that you're not getting anywhere, if you've tried to fight city hall, but I mean, within your own, um, company or whatever, and it hasn't, um, done any good, you may decide just to kind of throw in the towel, so to speak. But in some cases, let's say that you're, um, of retirement age and you were thinking of hanging on for longer, you may just say, you know what, it's not even worth it. And it wouldn't be that you're just like walking away with your tail between your legs. It's really about trying to, it's like an uphill battle, I would say with Mercury re or, uh, Mars retrograde, because there's this sense of maybe things have changed and you're clinging to the old version of things. And how this manifests, I mean, certain professions, um, you could talk about healthcare or education. Those are two professions that I actually think of Virgo as being part of that. But in those types of professions, there sometimes are reforms, changes to how things are done. And so it no longer resembles what you signed up for. So you may be like, you know what, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm like, um, being like David and David and Goliath, uh, trying to, to fight these powers that be and feeling like you're just kind of getting swallowed up by it. But in any case, there's something going on with Mars there as well. And the full moon can simply be some kind of, um, way that you, maybe a spiritual download of like, oh, okay, you know, this is what is going on. And, um, I've been also talking about how, you know, Mars is connected to how we express anger when it's retrograding. We may feel like we can't do this. We can't express anger, but in a lot of cases, people aren't doing so, uh, in a productive way. They're raging, <laughs> You know, raging is so common these days and it might be for a good cause. It's not like it's not for a good cause, but it's in a way that is very off-putting and, um, doesn't really look at the humanity of another person and see where they're coming from, but just kind of like, you know, this is what I want. And In terms of asserting oneself, I know like a lot of Virgo people are not uh, prone to put, you know, throwing their weight around, but you still may feel frustration, especially if you're trying to advance and you feel like you're not um, being allowed to. But I do feel that this could be some kind of um, 
promotion for some people. For some, it might be like the last straw where you just finally say, okay, I've had enough. I don't care if people think I'm a quitter. I'm just done. Or even just retirement. On the 9th, Venus goes into Capricorn. So this could definitely be love, but also art appreciation and creative self-expression. But coming from that aesthetic place of really wanting to bring beauty into the world. On the 20th, Jupiter goes back into Aries. So now Jupiter is going back into your domain, which happens to be, no, I, <laughs> I was like, when I was, when I was looking at that, I was thinking that doesn't sound right. It's not it, going back. I was thinking of going backwards, but it's actually going forwards for the second time into the eighth house. And, um, you had this uh, transit happen earlier this year. So this is the second go around, but this time it's going to stay and even go into Taurus. So when Jupiter is in this eighth house, and you may have already experienced this the first time that it did go into Aries, um, you are blessed by um, things of an occult nature. I kind of don't like that word, actually, because it sounds like, you know, kind of creepy and stuff. Um, the, the word occult means hidden and you could say the mysteries of life, but they're including astrology and the tarot in this category, but it can be any kind of metaphysical studies or training. I mean, people study just for their own, you know, self enrichment, but you can have actual, you know, something that you're studying and it can be also something connected to uh, an actual training. Shamanic healing is eighth house. Sh shamanism, paganism and shamanism, I guess, are pretty similar in certain regard because they're earth religions and they deal with magical practices and things like that. They're not, you know, organized religions per se. And they... I think they really emphasize an individualistic path. I don't know. I'm not like an expert on, on these matters, but that's what I gather from them. Um, also, you might gain through some kind of inheritance. And come to think of it, when you have uh, Neptune direct in the seventh, maybe there was some kind of legal matter that was hazy, that was not... Um, you didn't really know what was happening with what was going on. And when Neptune was retrograde, you got like more uh, information about that. But any kind of shared resources is favored with that. On the 21st, the very next day is the winter solstice. Yes, I am calling it winter, even if you're in Australia, because I'm furious. <laughs> That, you know, that I have to deal with snow today and you're probably eating watermelon right now in the sunshine, in the warmth of down under. So, um, there again, there's more of that energy, the sun warming up that romantic sector. So this is a romantic time for you. Perfect timing for all of the holiday stuff that's going on. And two days later, there's a new moon there at one degree of Capricorn. As I've been stating with other signs, this is likely going to be for most people, since it's only at one degree, going to be a new moon for their fourth house. Um, but, you know, officially we, we'll pretend it's the fifth. But because it's such an early degree, it might be actually your fourth house and then if it's that, then it's going to be some kind of new situation with your home life or um, dealing with your mother. Again, um, because there are shared resources, there might be other factors that are playing into it with family members and money, home, you know, like a, a property 
there might be, you know, buying a new property or finding it. And then for the fifth house, uh, just, you know, maybe a new love coming into your life. And on the 29th, I think for most people, this Mercury retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn will be in the fifth house for sure. And by the way, with Mercury retrograde, you might have um, a situation where you're, you hear from somebody, a past love comes in the next few weeks that you hear, you hear from them. So be prepared, um, because whether or not this is a good thing is a different story. You know, just because you hear back from somebody doesn't mean that's necessarily somebody you should be, um, dealing with. So just keep that in mind, but yeah, also you might be having a change of heart, um, when it comes to somebody that you're talking to, as the kids say, uh, you might be doing a lot more than talking actually, but the thing is you might be kind of rethinking it. Like, is this really a good thing? Should I continue to spend time with this individual? So anyway, that's what I have for you, Virgo. I hope that this resonated, at least to some degree, even though some of these things haven't happened yet. You might already detect themes that have been kind of um, occurring for you. And uh, if you would like a private reading from me, you can click on the link below. I'm promoting my double readings because they are a special price. They are a package deal. I have um, a needle chart interpretation. That's an hour with another hour of transits for 2023. And um, you can, um, that's called my deep dive reading. And I have another package reading with the tarot called the whole enchilada and just standalone readings too. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at randommoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.